And this guy stands up right in the middle, right in the, the middle of the entire audience and stands up and has this brave heart moment. And he goes, he doesn't speak Spanish! Guy. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for about 10, 12 years. He's absolutely hilarious. He's on The Daily Show as a Latino correspondent. Please give it up for Mr. Al Madrigal, everybody. Let him hear it. So in 2002, I went to the uh, Montreal Just for Laughs Comedy Festival, which is like the NBA draft for young comedians. It was a new face. And I was so excited to see the one other Latino comedian that was there, his name was Willie Barcena. He's a great comic, and I was so excited. I go, hey, Willie, how you doing? Al Madrigal, how are you? And he just walked up to me, he goes, you don't even say your own name right, bro? <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and just walked away. And I was left there going, oh, yeah. okay, Willie, see you later. And I had no idea, I, I was even, I hadn't gone to LA at that point, I was up in San Francisco. I had no idea that I was a Mexican comedian. I had no clue, <laughs> that's how bad my Spanish is horrible. And uh, I go down to LA for the very first time, and I didn't know that LA, they do this now with all these shows and none of these are made up, but they take all the black comics and they have chocolate sundaes at the Laugh Factory. <laughs> And Mo Better Mondays and Chopstick Wednesdays if you're an Asian comic. And then they tell you, all my Persian friends are on the Axis of Evil show, and so on and so on. So I go down there with my friend Becky. This is my first set in LA, and that's your first sign right there. No self respecting Mexican comedian has a friend named Becky. All right, you're, never gonna, you're never gonna hear me and my friend Becky got some pressed juices. Uh, you're not gonna. <laughs> It's not. So anyway, we go down and she has a set uh, at uh, the historic Melrose Improv with Bud Friedman and the Monocle. And uh, it's for the uh, HBO Aspen Comedy Arts Festival, another big deal for young comedians. And so I watch her check in and she gets an HBO comedy hat, HBO comedy t-shirt, and she checks in for her show. She's on the Thursday night, 8.30 show with the rest of my friends. And then I go to check in and they give me a tin of Red Hots, like uh, hot tamales candies in a mini Altoids case. It says HBO Latino. <laughs> and I get that. And then I go and check in for my show, and I'm on the Friday Night Late Show called Refried Fridays. <laughs> and it's with Carlos Mencia, Gabriel Iglesias, hosted by Pablo Francisco. Uh, Jeff Garcia, Freddie Soto, God rest his soul. And so I look at the Red Hots, I look at the list one more time, and I look at Becky and I call her, I go, Becky, I'm a Mexican comedian. <laughs> what do I do? And right at that moment, this guy taps me on the shoulder and he goes, hola, my name is Mateo, I'm from HBO Latino. Do you mind if I interview you in Spanish? And I go, you can fucking try, bro. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gonna work out for you. And by the way, como se dice, where's my t-shirt? How do you say that? Because everyone else got t-shirts and I got these red hots. <laughs> and then the gig started coming in. These, uh, and you know, I have a young family in Los Angeles and I get these, uh, at first when you start doing comedy in San Francisco, uh, you do open mics. Right? There's no microphone there. It's like three homeless people passed out. This place <laughs> called the luggage store that I did. And then you found out there was a microphone in Oakland. So we went over to Jack London Square and performed in front of all like these black gang members. And so it's like, 
just doing my stuff, and somebody's like, that's not funny, motherfucker. And I'm like, it's new stuff, I'm working on it, RJ. And he's just, just, just trying premises out, so. But then this really big gig, once it moved down to uh, LA, and it's funny, it brought me back to the Bay Area, but I get this gig in East San Jose, California, and you don't have to be familiar with the San Francisco Bay Area to know that anything east, most cities, usually pretty shitty. So, <laughs> driving there with my wife, commercial comes on, the oldie station, uh, Tony Sandoval, Kiss FM, for the show I'm actually going to do. So we got a big Latino comedy jam and Al Madrigal is going to be there. I'm in my car going, whoa, oh, so that's how you say it. Okay, got it? <laughs> Then I go to the gig, and it's 2,000 Mexicans in a GI hall, just packed. It's like a big cafeteria. And my wife looks at me, and she goes, dude, you gotta get the fuck out of here. Because <laughs> she's supportive like that. And I say, no, honey, have a little faith in me. I can handle myself. Now, the reason my wife is concerned is that the guy before me is doing his entire act in Spanish and destroying. Every single time he hits a big punchline, little Mexican guys with gold-plated teeth, they all have corn on the stick, so they're fucking putting their corn to the air. Crema is flying everywhere. It's like cloudy with a chance of carnitas. And I didn't know that the Mexican corn was like the concert lighter for a, a Latino Def Jam show. So uh, now I gotta go up there. And I asked myself, I go, okay, I can do this. What would Carlos Mencia do in this situation? That's one of the rare times you want to ask yourself that question. <laughs> there I go. I know. I'm going to go up there, and I do a little cheerleading. So I go up on stage, and I go, What's up, East San Jose? Make some noise! And they all made some noise. All right, so I'm doing good. So... I say, where are all the white people at? White people, make some noise, white people! Nothing. <laughs> Half of me's the only white guy there. <laughs> so I say, where are all the black people at? Black people, make some noise, black people! Nothing. Where the hell were you guys? Could have fucking used you. <laughs> and then I say, so it's all Latinos. 2,000 corns just up in the air at the exact same time. And I'll never forget, right where you are in the front, this little guy goes, Eastside Latinos. And I said, Eastside Latinos? Even bigger roar, like think a bacon-wrapped hot dog went flying. <laughs> then I proceeded to do my act just by saying fuckers and bros nonstop. Just fuckers and bro, fuckers and bros. And then humping for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Didn't make any fucking sense. If you're sitting near a Latino, look how much they love this right now. They can't get enough. <laughs> Does not make sense, but they can't get enough of it. <laughs> What's up, fuckers? I just had a new baby, fuckers, fuckers, bro, bro, fuckers, fuckers. 25,000 fuckers later, 25 minutes, I'm out of there. Then I go to the next gig, it's a two-parter. Next day, it's in Stockton, California. Which is this meth shithole in the middle of nowhere. Industry has died, it was like ground zero for the uh, housing crisis, right? Foreclosure signs everywhere. People are angry all the time. I think there's just pods with embryonic MMA fighters. <laughs> And when you start to do stand-up, the younger comics, they uh, get, the older comics pull us to the side and they tell us three shows that you should not do. I was told this uh, by great comics that sort of were very helpful. I said, don't perform outside. Don't perform in front of kids and don't perform during the day. This is all three. Even the kids are fucking tough in Stockton. I'm not sure if anyone's ever been intimidated by a five-year-old, but your little wife beaters walking by going, fuck you, AC. And I, huh? Okay, children, uh, run along. <laughs> so I walk into the show and I walk backstage. Now, the guy who's doing so well the night before, you remember him? He's now crying. He's got a tear running down his cheek. And I go, Ruben, what's wrong? How was your set? And he goes, Al, they threatened my life. 
What happened was he went up in Stockton and uh, he went on stage and said he was from L.A. And apparently Ruben hadn't been watching his National Geographic gang documentaries uh, because that was a no-no. A uh, big battle going on between the North and the South. Ruben was unaware. He went up, said he was from Los Angeles, and guys started sharpening their corn sticks. They were ready to fucking stab his ass. He pointed the dues out. Now I gotta go up there, and I already determined on the long car ride out, I'm not gonna be this Latino Def Jam character that I'm not. I spent the first half of my life, my parents sent me to French school in San Francisco. I went to Ecole Notre Dame de Victoire. Yeah, I used to wear a sailor suit to school every single day. I rode the cable car with a dickie blowing in the wind. Now I'm gonna be this Latino Def Jam character? That's bullshit, I'm gonna be myself. And that was a horrible idea. <laughs> Never be yourself. Change it up. Fuck it. What do you got to lose? <laughs> so I go up on stage, and I start to do this bit about how my Spanish is horrible, and how you spot a half Mexican, overuse of the word paquito. <laughs> Habla espanol, un poquito. Salsa picante, un poquito. Maricón, un poquito. <laughs> And this guy stands up right in the middle, right in the, the middle of the entire audience and stands up and has this brave heart moment. And he goes, he doesn't speak Spanish! <laughs> and then starts violently flipping me off. Not just like, hey, fuck you, but holding it, shaking. <laughs> so he starts, he starts leading people in booze against me. He's going, he doesn't speak Spanish. Woo! Woo! He doesn't speak Spanish. Woo! Woo! 20 people are booing, 80 people are booing, and finally I broke down, which I, I tend to do. Um, I said, look, you guys, this is exactly a dream gig for me either. I'm stuck in Stockton of all godforsaken places, and the best part about it is I get to leave, and you people are stuck here for the rest of your miserable fucking lives. Now, I'm taking the money and I'm being paid handsomely. I'm gonna go blow it in Tracy Outlet Malls, so fuck off. <laughs> and the guy stood back up and goes, he's got money! <laughs> then I ended up jumping a fence like a salmon while the black security guards laughed at me. That's how that fucking turned out. All right, thank you very much, everybody.